Welcome back to our channel where we simplify your ServiceNow tech. If you are using ServiceNow and your system is starting to slow down, you might need to think about data archiving. Stay tuned as we dive into the, how we get started with ServiceNow data archiving and ensure your system runs smoothly. Hi everyone, I am Amit Gujarati and today we are going to explore how to manage data growth and enhance your ServiceNow performance through effective archiving. Whether it's for compliance, performance or both, archiving is key. So let's get into it. As a service, as your service now instance matures, it accumulates a lot of data, much of which you might not need on a daily basis. Let's say task record for, from last two, three years ago, right? They, they are probably not as crucial as your current task, right? That's where archiving comes into play. Archiving, what archiving actually does, so archiving moves less relevant data from the primary table to the archive table, freezing up the space and improving performance. Okay. For example, if you are dealing with the incident table, initiating an archiving rule will create an uh, uh, intermediate table with the suffix as AR underscore incident table, uh, where your old incident are stored safely away from the active database. So basically what it does in your active database, you will have only uh, the required data and you can play around it, you can query around it and it, it will be pretty smooth, right? It will not create any performance hamper. So let's dive deep into and you can jump, you can see on, on this is my personal development instance which is currently on the Washington release and we have a separate application itself for archiving. So if I type in the archiving, so this is the module which is called a system archiving, okay? Why exactly I landed on this particular module? So basically, we have also discussed in our service now social episode. In our project, we are facing a difficulty. We want to clean up the data of CMDB CI, okay, the, which is again a different use case and some incident records, uh, which were which were there in the native table from more than ten years. When we try to delete delete it out, it's it's pretty difficult, right? It occupies all the nodes and is creating a hamper. So that's where we we formulated the policies around the archiving. So if you get if you click on get started, right, it will basically what it will do, it will move you to to the documentation for the same. And you can use this documentation uh, to get the gist of what exactly is there in the archiving. So I will just what I will do, I'll just minimize this out. And we'll go back to our native. So let's look into the mo modules which are included in this. So if you look into the archiving, there are multiple modules involved over there. Where's that? There is archiving rule, archiving logs, archive destroy rule, archive destroy log, status, archive property, and then we have the archive table. So what is first of all, let's go bottom to top approach for this particular time right so what are archive table as i told you whenever you write a policy archiving policy on any table or archiving rule on any table basically it creates a other table okay for that particular table itself where the archival data will be stored for that table and it will start with some suffix called er underscore okay so if there is an incident table so the archival table for the incident will be AR underscore incident. In the similar way, we can see there is out of the box knowledge, catalog item, audit results. We must be seeing, right? The audit result, when we look into the audit result, we will not be able to see all the audit records, right? In the table. So that's, this is the place where it goes. Then we have archival properties. So what exactly this archiving property is? So basically it has two properties. It's a co collection of two properties. So first of all, it's pretty clear from the name itself number of records to archive when archive runs so basically when we re, uh, when we define archival rule right it will have a batch of data right but the archival will not happen for example you have 10000 records to be archived it will not happen immediately for 10000 record because it will definitely hamper the performance of the system it will occupy all the nodes and so on and so forth so we need to define a batch what should be the batch for your archival so if you have defined 100 so it will take 100, 100 records and archive it out when the rule get executed. Okay. And then we have maximum number of batches to process when archive 
per runs. So it's also pretty clear. So it's how many archival batches, maximum archival batch should be run on that particular table, a certain table out. Okay, so it's 10 by default. So you can change it out based on your requirement. Then we have archive status and we have archive log. So basically this is for seeing the status of the archival rules which are getting executed. Okay, and archive log is the logs. I will not go into that. Okay, now the most important there are two models which are really important in this application which is archive rules and archive destroy rules so let's dive deep into this so we will go first into archive rule so what exactly the archive rule is archive rule is a, a policy or rule you define on a certain table archival rule okay based on that rule the archival will happen okay i i think it's pretty clear so if we click on new and try to create a new archival rule so for example if i give it as a test it asks for the table okay so if i want to select it as incident okay as soon as i select incident come on why oh, it's not getting selected I will just use the sh shortcut. Okay, incident. Then we can define the condition. For example, we can give if we don't want any record which is inactive. Okay, you can write anything. And you can define the condition. Okay, and then we have written references kind of thing. Right? So, what exactly written references is? So, if you check this particular checkbox out, so with the if, if, this incident record is referenced on any other table okay so how exactly it happens if the record is getting ref um if this checkbox is not checked okay and if this particular record is getting referenced on any other table for example we have problem table over that we have a reference to the incident so it will store only the display name for that the reference will, will only have the display value for the record okay no other information but if we check this checkbox return references so basically what it will do uh it will also store the sysid so that we can navigate to that particular record also okay and then we have auto re archive so if the record is restored okay so and you want to re archive it out okay again auto re archive then this particular checkbox needs to be checked so let's look what are let's look at few rules okay which is created out of the box. So with that, we will get some more idea from the same. Which one will make more sense? Oh, this this is one on incident, right? We have we will see on the image one also, but let's look into the incident one. So basically, this is on incident table. Okay, it's currently inactive. Okay, um, and it has a description archive incident that are no longer active. And their close dates are six months ago. So we are closing all the incidents which are closed before six months. And the same is mentioned in the condition active is false and closed before six months. Okay. So this is how you can define it out. And we have two related lists. The one is the archive run. Okay. What exactly is what all archives are getting run? Okay. Will be seen over here. And then we have archive related records. Okay. What all records are getting archived? This will be shown over here. We have recalculate estimates also. So we get the estimate, right? Key when the last record, when the last um, run, next run will happen. Okay. Um, and uh, what are the number of records? Okay. Which are, which will be getting archived in the next run. So this is how the archive rule works. Let's look into the email one also. Say if I go over the email. Okay. So this is also valid one. Okay. So basically what it does that it's it's it clearly states right over a year old or ignored. So whatever emails are there which are almost a year old or which are in ignored state, right? Okay. We don't want it. We want to archive it out. So you can say create it before or it's receive ignore or send ignore. The same calculation and you can see this particular right that um this record got deleted and so on. 
when from archival the record get deleted, then it get get added to this. Okay, so this is all about archival rule. You can create your own archival rule. Now moving to the next part, which is archive destroy rule. This is interesting. Okay, now what exactly this particular thing does? Okay, so for an instance, if I go new. Okay, now if I click over here, so basically it's like this particular table is used in order to delete the archival table. Okay, that is that will be destroyed. Okay, so basically you can see over here there there are, you will be seeing only the archival tables only over here. Okay, so you can see archive audit the one which we were seeing in the archival model, this one. If you go to the archive table, these are the three, and we can see only these three tables out over here. Okay, and it's the cleanup activity on the archival table. Okay, so this is how the archive destroy rule works. So we will open some dis archive destroy rules. So for instance, there is no archive destroy rule. Wow. Sorry, not there. Be. So what what? Which one should I take? Let's look into this only. Okay. So basically what is doing? You can see over here a lot of things happen. Okay. Number of record which got deleted. Okay. Finished one time process. So basically what is doing? It's doing the cleanup on this particular table on sysml. It's starting from AR. That means it's the archival table, right? AR under the sysml. So it's getting the archival dump from this particular table. Is it clear? So this is how it works. Okay, the archival rule. Oh, these are the two crucial models. Uh, crucial modules which you have to consider when working on this particular application. A critical tip. Okay, archive table aren't designed for on-demand queries like your active tables okay so you can't play around like glide record you are doing glide record glide oh, aggregate and so on right they are they are structured for quick access to index field only such as display value or creation date okay this keeps the system lean and fast so you should always keep this uh thing in mind okay so uh now let's extend it out okay now what about those of you are handling sensitive data okay like configuration management database record okay or cmdb okay we are specifically designed for this type of records so there is a system called cmdb data manager i will be creating another video for the debug of, of for the detailed overview for it but if you want to just have an overview around the same so if you type over here cmdb data manager because cmdb is crucial right you can see this particular interface, right? Policies, excluded CIs, and all. So if you go on to policies, okay. Let's see if there is any policy. There is no policy right now. So if you create a new, so it gives you interface to create a policy, okay, to create an archival rule for CMDB CI. One instance, um, I will give computer. Clean up. I will not give policy type now you guys what needs to be done it's a delete retire assertion archive so we want to go with the archival right okay task assigned by group support group I will not go into that you can define class configuration item is computer okay and what action needs to be taken so you want archive configuration item right so as soon as you move ahead with this okay uh, this particular data will get cleaned up okay from this okay so i will create a separate video on this particular part out but just to share the insight because you should it should not happen that you start cleaning up you should start writing the archive on the cmdb tables so uh, before we wrap up okay remember to check your archive table acl to ensure that data isn't just archive but also secured okay and if you are setting new acl make sure you understand how they interact with existing permission to avoid any access issues this is a pro tip okay you should always keep oh 
always keep in mind so this is all for today's tutorial uh thanks for watching if you found this tutorial helpful okay please like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more tips on make on making the most of service now platform okay i hope the archive rules are clear to you if still if any queries okay drop your questions or experience with data archiving in the comment below and see you all in the next video thank you